There's an interesting verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5, and it says, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then everyone will have praise from God. It was one of my privileges as a young man to often sit around uh, the large table in the Pell home in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And they were full of good stories. And on one occasion, I was sitting there having my supper and uh, stories were being told. And this story so illustrates this particular truth. It just thrilled me. Sometimes when people read this verse, they become quite terrified, thinking, oh no, all of these things in my heart are going to be exposed. But the verse ends with these beautiful words that everyone will have praise from God. God is not going to be digging through all of the evil thoughts and wicked things. That's all covered by the cross. What God is doing is looking for the things that people have done that no one else knows about. The kind things, gracious things, thoughts, prayers, encouragements that have largely gone unnoticed except by him. And like the woman who cast in all her living, if the Lord Jesus hadn't drawn attention to it, no one would have noticed. Well, the Lord is going to draw attention to all of these kind things. And says the scripture, everyone in that day will have praise from God. But notice the introductory words, judge nothing before the time. We're often assuming that that story ended badly when we have to wait until God tells the whole tale right to the end. So this story that I heard was told by a traveling preacher who said that he had been preaching in a town up in northern Michigan and he was preaching on the love of God. And as he was preaching, he noticed a woman, quite red-faced, tears running down her cheeks, and she got up and, and she rushed out of the meeting. And afterwards, he talked to one of the elders about this, and the elder said, yes, that lady is in our local fellowship here. But she had such a searing experience in her life, she just hasn't been able to get over it. Well, the preacher felt constrained to go and visit this woman. He came to the door, and, and she was quite ashamed when she saw him. I'm sorry, she said, that I, I acted like that, but, you know, this thing has happened to me in my life, and I just can't get over it. And he said, would you mind telling me the story? Well, she said, I became a Christian after we were married. My husband was not a Christian, and I often prayed for him and spoke with him about the Lord but he was very cavalier and very unconcerned about his soul. He was a traveling sales manager, and on one occasion he'd gone out and picked up a new Cadillac. He came home with it, and he was getting ready to go on a trip, and I was in the bedroom praying that God would save him. I was just so concerned, him going out on the busy highways and not knowing where he stood with God. So he called in, as I was still on my knees in the bedroom, and he said, come and see my new Cadillac. And she said, I shouldn't have said it. But in that moment, I called back, oh, honey, who cares if you go to hell in a Cadillac? And he was so angry. He said, that's it. And he went, stormed up, took his briefcase, took his suitcase, out to the car, squealing of tires, and away he went in the car. A couple of hours later, two police officers showed up at my door and they told me the sad news that my husband had been killed in a head-on collision. And I just can't get over this. The preacher said to her, it wouldn't happen to have been a gold Cadillac. She said, how would you know? Well, he said, I was a college student and I was working up in northern Michigan. I was hitchhiking, and as I was standing by the side of the road with my finger in the air, along came a brand new gold Cadillac and pulled to the side of the road, and I climbed in. 
And as we traveled along, I began to share the gospel with this man. He gave a bit of a wry smile and he said, you know, I just left my wife. She's a Christian and I'm not. And I wanted to show her this new Cadillac before I left on my trip. And she said to me, oh, honey, who cares if you go to hell in a Cadillac? And he said, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to hell in a Cadillac. And he pulled the car off to the side of the road. And this preacher said to this dear woman, you know, I had the privilege of pointing your husband to the Lord Jesus before he died. You know, God loves happy endings. And many of the stories we think, well, they're in a coma. They're past it now. Do you realize that the Spirit of God doesn't need the equipment we do to communicate? He doesn't need the body. He communicates directly to people's spirits. And I dare say there's many a person, a whole category of people in the Bible known as brands plucked from the burning, where the devil thought, here they come. And in the last moments, God saved them. I tell you this, if there's any way that God can righteously save a person, he'll do it. So let's not lose hope in God. He's the God of all encouragement. And as our scripture says, judge nothing before the time. There's going to be a happy day coming when we're going to hear the end of a lot of stories. And God's going to have a surprise ending for us. <laughs>